Hey guys, welcome back to Dave's Outdoorsy Stuff. Uh, today I thought I'd show you how I make a kayak spoon. Uh, it's one of the easiest spoons to make. And uh, I'll admit lately I've been doing a lot of carving on either wood spirits, as you might have seen on my old video, um, which has gone massively well and got some fantastic comments and likes and subscriptions from that so thank you so much please do keep spreading the word and uh, let me know if anything as well you think i you, you might like to see from me as well as so things i might be able to, to help out with whether it's question and answers or whether it's a specific project i can have a go at uh we could do it together so please do let me know um but yeah it's either been the, the wood spirits or lately it's been spoons and i thought a great thing to get people started is a kayak spoon. It's very simple, very effective. They really last well. And uh, because they take minimal effort, you use them in all sorts of things. You can use them for eating your porridge in the mornings, for making a coffee, for taking on a long hike and using for every meal. It's completely up to you. But quite easily, you can quickly pick up a stick and carve one with minimal tools as well. So it's a great thing to get started with. Uh, just to show you a couple of examples, a lot of the kayak spoons I've made, I've either lost or given away and I've rooted around the house. I can only find two at the moment. So this is one of the first ones I made, found it in the back of the drawer, but it was actually a spoon I carved while we were camping once and realized when we got to our site, I'd completely forgot to pack any spoons, knives and forks, um, but you can't really make much of a coffee without a spoon. So, and as you can tell by the staining on that, uh, sorry, the light was bleaching it a little there, but as you can tell by the staining on that, it's been used for a lot of coffees and a lot of cups of tea over the time, because we've used it at home, we've used it uh, out camping, we just keep using it. It's a handy little spoon. I made it to about a teaspoon size, so it it's just perfect really for that sort of thing. And it didn't take me very long to do. I used a piece of old um, kindling to, to do it with, because we were a bit, um, stressed and needed a coffee we just unpacked everything so it was a very quick little carve and then later on while I was sat in front of the tent I just whittled in a little little pattern on the top just for fun but that's a great little spoon lasted us a long time and here's another one I did a, a little while ago um, of a little com little basic kayak spoon there so the general shape is like a boat like a kayak it's got that tapering to the end there and it's very flat on the top so you don't need a lot of level of a high level of skill uh, you you can really put in the skill that you want it's a great one to add patterning into if you want to add some patterning and again at the bottom you don't have to add in the curves of the spoon um, you don't have to add in that top curve that in the spoon community we call a crank uh, but you can you can do as much as you like if you compare the two you'll see that the older spoon I did put in a little bit of a curve just because I fancied putting it in there but you don't have to I'm not going to do it on today's demonstration it's going to be nice and simple and easy for everyone to follow but that's all you're going to do really so the only things you need nice and simple are a knife I prefer a sloyd knife for when I'm carving spoons and sloyd knife is basically gives that long curve up it's a nice long knife nice and thin so you can really get those curves and those edges nice and straight I uh, highly recommend a Mora knife for these they come razor sharp and this is the super cheapy version with a plastic handle but you can get some nice wooden handles as well but I've got a family and I can't afford the expensive ones at the moment so that will do for me and uh, the other thing you're going to need is a spoon knife or a gouge it's completely up to you uh, so I've got a spoon knife here that helps to carve in the bowl as you'll see and this is a more and more a one as well you can there's a lot of independent uh, blacksmiths and metal workers that make them as well uh, you can find a lot of them on instagram facebook I, I this is really the only one i've used it was a double bevel one but i found i spent more time pushing my finger against the the sharp edge so i ground that down so it's nice and flat now um, and that was a mistake of mine we all make mistakes but i would personally recommend a single edged one and the mores are difficult to sharpen because they've got what's called a double bevel so not only does it go the once it goes a second time so they're a bit difficult to sharpen but again for to start you out with it's a great one it lasts a long time before you do need to sharpen it or give it a good sharpen but i'd highly recommend dropping it as well there's lots of videos on youtube uh, of how to do that i will probably do something similar um, in the future as well more to do with sloyd i've done a basic sharpening one and off the top of my head, I can't remember if I covered hook knives in it, 
but if I did, I'll put a link up there for you as well. And then the only other things you need is gloves, obviously, to protect your hands and um, the wood. That's pretty much it. So I've just got a piece of willow here and I've split it in two and you can use anything you want to split it. You can use a throw, an axe. Um, I use an old machete that was found at the back of my mum and dad's garage that they didn't want because uh, it was rusty and horrible, but I cleaned it up and it's fantastic for splitting wood. Uh, you could even use your knife, although be careful with these carving knives because they're not what's called full tang. So there's a chance they will snap or they'll break out of the handle, especially these plastic ones. Um, you really want more of a bushcraft knife that's got a full tang so it has the metal right the way through. But all you have to do is just put it on onto the top of the wood where you want to split it and give it a whack on the back with another log or a mallet or, or whatever you might have with you and just split it right through. But like I said, make sure you've got the proper knife for it because you might just ruin your favourite knife if you do that. Um, and so that's really it. Let's get started. Okay. Okay, so the first thing to do really is to choose which part of the wood you're going to use. Now, when you're doing that, you want to look at which piece has the most amount of knots in it, for one, because knots are a pain to carve through. So this one has only got the one knot there. This one's got a couple there. So, and also this one has a big split at the end where the wood cracked and broke as I was uh, sawing it open. So I'm going to leave that one to one side and I'm going to use this one. Also, depending on the kind of spoon you're going to make, whether you want a curve in it or not, you can follow that curvature of the wood. I'm going to pretty much follow that. I think it's it's not too bad. Um, it's quite straight. It's got a little bit of a bend in it. But as you're carving, you'll prob we'll probably carve that out. So the first thing to do is get rid of the pith in the middle. And the pith is that soft, pulpy stuff in the middle that you get in the middle of the wood, which really sends the sap through the wood. But as it dries, it's going to be all spongy and flaky and it's going to let more and more moisture and air into the wood as it dries so it's going to crack it so you want to get rid of that before you start carving into it um, another note to say i prefer to carve my spoons in green wood some prefer to use um, dried out wood uh, it's completely up to you really it's personal preference as to what you want to do but um you know give it a go do one half now, try the other half later on once it's dried. If it's willow, like I'm using mine, it will take a very long time to dry. So just be prepared to wait for it. And then, so what I'm going to do, I found another tiny little knot there. So I'm just going to take that off there just to make the carving a that little bit easier. And then what we'll do is just work around that. So that's what I'm trying to get down to across the whole thing where the pith is completely gone. I'll probably fast forward through this little bit now, just so that you haven't got to watch. Okay, so there we have it. So the pith is completely gone. Uh, all you can see is just the tiny part of that knot just starting to come through there. And we'll just assess that as we go, really, because this is a, a nice, simple spoon for mucking about, making a mess with. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not something I'm going to be planning on selling or giving away. It's something that's just going to be a useful piece of kit in the either in my camping bag or in my bush bag or for my forest school or, or even just keep in the back of the drawer for a cup of tea. So that's where you want to get to to start with. It's worth noting as well as you're carving. Keep looking up both ends. Try and get it as flat as you can to start with. Now I can even see there where that knot is. There's a little bit of a lump there, but I'm not that fussed at that at the moment. We'll probably take some of that off anyway, but try and get it as smooth and as flat as you can. That will give you the best start to it. So once we've done that, we're just gonna grab our pen and I'm gonna run a line, straight line down the middle of the wood to give us our center line. Okay. Then I'm just gonna choose where we want the bowl of the spoon. Now I'm gonna try and avoid that knot. So I'm just gonna draw a spoon shape. And I wouldn't recommend going right up to the very tip there. Leave a little gap where you're gonna do it because 
you run the risk of not carving that end and carving with a sharp carving knife and car cutting with a saw is going to give you two very different feels and very different looks. Cutting with a saw leaves those pores open, whereas cutting with a very sharp knife will give you a nice clean finish. So I'm just going to bring it round to the outside and match it as, as well as I can there. Now I like to do freehand, but you can draw this on a template first. You can mark in on your template where your middle line is. You can even fold it along the piece of wood so that you've got the exact measurements there and then really have a go at playing with it. But I'm just going to wing it for this one. And then with the kayak spoon, because you're not normally with other spoons, you will come in at this point here and really bring in that thin neck. With a kayak spoon, you go to the further mast edges and all you're doing is you're bringing it back down to where you want that end to be. So I'm going to bring the end here just about where that knot is so that we've got that out the way and I'm just going to sketch it in. Now normally I'd do this with a pencil but because of the camera and making it that little bit easier I'm going to use a pen for you. And then the same on that side go from the edge and just slowly start working your way down to that point. And now it's it's completely up to you when you've done it whether you want to round off the tip but this will give you the basic shape of your kayak spoon and you can always fiddle with it as you go as you're carving bring it in a little bit but that's going to give us the basic shape now this is where the beauty comes in because with a bigger spoon you might well need to work on those axe skills to really start cutting in with a, something like this you're only going to need a knife because it's nice and small so I'm just going to start working around that edge now carving in firstly around the line we've just made this bit because it's nice and small I'm using these little cuts here and as I'm going I'm coming in so that my knife isn't going to cut me it's only going to stop here but I've got a good amount of power I've got fantastic control it's a very handy little cut for those small details where you've got a lot of wood to remove and now just towards the edges always worth it as you're carving as well especially on curves keep checking the angles quite often you'll carve at an angle that way or even that way keep making sure look to the side look to the to the top can you see where you're carving if you're doing this sort of thing a kayak spoon for sure the most visible thing is the top everything else is going to taper away underneath so that's a great way of doing it there just to make sure that you're not tapering the wrong way already and it doesn't matter if you go in a tiny bit on this kind of spoon you can style that out but obviously bad habits produce more bad habits so it's a good habit to get into and now i'm just going to start drawing through the wood towards me until i get that line and i'm just going to go bit by bit by bit slicing it nice and slowly I've got a very firm grip on the top of the spoon here. Notice as well, I haven't done what the, the delicate part, the tip first on that overall there. And that's because if you start off with the most delicate part, when you turn around and do the others, you're going to be holding on to that delicate part. You run more of a risk of breaking it. And that's happened to me a few times where I've done necks of spoons too quickly. And then I go and do the bowl of the spoon and it breaks everywhere and a nice big crack and you end up with a tiny bowl and nothing else about big enough to fit a couple of pennies in and then i'm going to do the same on the other side minding your fingers obviously This is the part now and you can see it I've just cut through it where that knot is coming through and those knots are going to be difficult but it's something we've got to put up with if we're using fresh green wood
Also, don't be like me. Don't leave your gloves all fluffy and horrible. I've used these gloves over and over again. I've already got holes coming through my repairs. But, uh, yeah, a lot of the shops are shut at the moment and I'm a cheapskate, so I've bought this athletic tape to keep me going for now. So, carving on a shoestring with me. <laughs> there we go. So, that's the basic shape. Done. That didn't take long at all. So now, I'm going to start bringing that line in. So again, with the pen now, I'm going to take the bark off. And then I'm going to slowly bring it up, probably to about just over halfway, really. I don't want it to be too thin, run the risk of it cracking and breaking. And then I'm going to bring it back to the very deepest up there. So just bring that that line sketch it in doesn't matter we can always we're going to take this part off anyway so it doesn't really matter about leaving a bit, little bit of pen on there for now and i'm just going to bring that in there so do the same on this again because i'm working backwards on this i have done the thinner part first but I'm only going to then work backwards on it so I'm still holding on to that thick part for now because I know that the back of this isn't going to need a massive amount of work doing to it because it's already rounded as being a stick so it's just taking the bark off really you can leave the bark on if you really wanted to there's no problem with it so a lot of spoon carvers do leave the barks on, especially on the handles. It has a beautiful effect, but for some reason, whenever I try to do it, my bark always goes a funny colour. And it's not just because it's willow. I've tried it on other things as well, but I don't know that magic touch yet. Sorry about that break in the video there. My camera decided it was going to have a funny few minutes. So we've got the edges here. We've taken the bark off. And we've rounded it. I've rounded it a little bit at the edge. So we did have a a flat edge to it. I've just taken that up to make it look more like a spoon and I've taken the cornering and the edges off there. So all we need to do now is just neaten it up, take off those tiny little slivers of wood just to give it, stop it looking blocky and make it flow that bit better. And as I've said on videos before, if you see a straight line on your carving and you want to make it look curved just keep carving the straight part the um, angled parts those cornered edges and it might seem sometimes like you're just pushing it off to the edge like you're flattening out a bubble underneath some sticky paper but you will get a much better rounded edge and it saves you using sandpaper which can open the pores and can lead to some nasty endings, especially with cookware and eating things like spoons, knives, forks. So anyway, we'll neaten up the rest of that later on. Now comes the fun part, the bowl of the spoon. So I'm just going to, with my pen, draw a very thin line just around the edge of the bowl. And that is just going to give me a gentle guide to where to put my spoon, knife or gouge, whichever one you're using. So then we've got that and it is such a lovely tool to use this. So I'm gonna reverse the carving in my hand and I'm just gonna use it to scoop it out. I've got my thumb out the way and I'm just scooping little by little by little out. And the sharper your spoon knife, the better you're gonna get of your carving. I've just realized I haven't plugged my microphone back in. So if it does sound a bit different than it was, I apologize, but you should still be able to hear me. Okay. So I'm gonna do a lot on that side and then I'm gonna turn it around, minding my thumbs out the way. And I'm gonna do more on this side, putting it in at the lines I've drawn on and then bringing it around. And you'll get to the point where it's just rocking back and forward and it's nice and easy. It glides through 
like butter on a summery morning. You know, the moment it's not quite melted, but it's just perfect for your toast. And again, like carving the rest, you just keep going until you're deep enough and you've got a smooth enough bowl there. I've missed my line a little on the inside, so I'm going to style that out. Let me go and bring it around here. And keep carving here. Now remember, look at look at the spoons in, in your cutlery drawers as well. How are they formed? Most of the time, the deepest part is right in the middle. So make sure that's where it is and taper it out to the lip so that you can get that little sip if you wanted to. And again, it's going to go shallow near the end because being flat, it's going to pour right back onto your hands if you are using this as an eating spoon. So just be careful what you do. I think I'm going to probably leave that there. That's what I say, and then I keep going. So yeah, leave it there. Hardest thing to know is when to stop. Now, a little trick I've learned, a little bit of fluff there, with the spoons is what you want to do is angle it about, trying to get the right camera angle here, about 45 degrees, there we go, off. And then you're gonna carve just the edge corner along the outside so that you're meeting the edge of your bowl carving. Go to the middle, stop, because that's where you're gonna start getting the grain going back the other way around. And then again, I'm going to use a push cut and do exactly the same on this side. What that does, it really neatens up those sides and edges. It gives you a nice, clear edge of the spoon. And it also shows you very quickly where your wobbly bits are when you're carving. Oh, my silly camera here won't zoom in properly, but you can see it. It's a bit blurry but it's a little bit wobbly there. So now we can go around the outside of it and really neaten that up. Remember, this spoon could end up in your mouth. So you don't want edges and flat parts and knobbly bits rubbing against your tongue. You want it nice and smooth. You don't want to stick it in your mouth and be thinking about the spoon and not what's on inside the spoon. And again, when you get to that middle of the grain, stop and go the other way because you're going to rip that grain and you're going to cause, ugh, it's just going to be horrible. You're going to cause splintering. You're going to cause it to go and split. That's where you want to stop. Just nearly did it there. Okay, so now I'm just going to run along that part, just taking those edges in. And now it's just about neatening and tidying it up. That's the main part of your spoon done. So now I'm just gonna run the knife along and just take off the pen marks. And that will then help me to see the edges of my spoon that little bit better so I can really neaten up the edges of it. But that is basically it. That is your kayak spoon ready. I'm rearing. There. So I've taken those edges off. I'm going to go back along here and put those angles in on the edges. Much better. And then now I can go along. I'm going to put that angle in right to the tip. And again, on this side. There, that is your basic kayak spoon. Nice and easy, really handy little spoon. So disposable 
is a good way of putting it because it's useful. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't take hardly any time. I can knock one of these out in 10, 15 minutes. And if you're not making it look pretty, well, then it doesn't matter, does it? If you lose it, it doesn't matter. If you break it, it doesn't matter. You just keep going. So that's that. Okay, so a quick word about finishing your spoons though as well, because again, if you're going to be using this for eating or, or even just storing up on a wall, you want to make sure that it is coated in something that's going to protect it. So there are a multitude of ways of doing that, a multitude of ingredients to use, but the simplest thing is to use just an oil. I like walnut oil, um, but again, there are some pretty serious allergies to it. So if I'm using if I'm doing spoons for someone other than my family or for an organization or anything like that, I will probably use something along the lines of a beeswax balm, which I will do in a future video of how to make that. But uh, first of all, you want to burnish it, your spoon, and that is to give it a good rub with something that is smooth and slightly shiny. So you can use a pebble or a rock from a riverbed. Um, I wouldn't really use anything from the sea because they tend to be very dry unless you happen to find a nice shiny rock. You could use um, a plastic rolling pin, anything like that really. I like to use an antler um, that I've just got rounded off at the top there. What I would say to anyone that is thinking about using antler, if you have to cut it or sand it, it stinks. It really smells bad. Just be prepared for that one. But once it's done, it's usable. So all you need to do then is just using your polished part of your antler, rub it all over your spoon. And what this does is it closes up all of those pores. It flattens down all those edges as well and helps you to give it that extra shine without having to use sandpaper and you're just going to give it a good firm rub all over not firm enough that you're going to end up breaking whatever you've carved but firm enough that you will notice a slight shine almost like those quick shoe shine sponges that you get but not quite as obvious and again i've got that rounded part so i can really get into the bowl of a spoon and really rub it down and close those pores, close those edges. There. Now ideally, you would wait for your spoon to be completely dry for this, but because this is just a demonstration video and I'm not really fussed about this one, I'm just gonna do it for you to show you what to do. Um, but you would normally leave it to dry on your shelf for a little bit. I wouldn't put it on a radiator because that slow heat is more likely to crack it. Again, I would leave it to dry first uh, if you wanted to bake your spoon, which will give you a nice sort of browned color. Um, but uh, I've done it with green spoons before and they've been safe, they've been okay, but it is a very sort of potluck. It's a roll of the dice and you're lucky if you get a six sort of thing. I've just been lucky, I think lately. And then all you're doing is getting your oil. I just use normal food grade oil. You can use rapeseed oil, vegetable oil. There's a bit of a controversy with olive oil that it can make your spoons go rancid. Again, I've never had that problem. I've used it once or twice, never had that problem, but I prefer to use the one hour. I like the smell of it. I like the coloring of it as well. It's got a very slightly different color to olive oil, which has more of a greeny sort of greeny yellow tinge to it. Um, but again, rapeseed oil, dirt cheap from the, from the supermarket. I use the walnut oil. So all you want to do is just lift it up for you. Pour it into the bowl, a little bit into the bowl. You probably will get a bit of dripping, so don't do this over any fabrics like your sofa or your armchair, which I may have found out before. But pour it in there. Give it a couple of minutes or a couple of moments even just to soak in and let it pour onto a tissue and you're just rubbing it in, generously rubbing it into that spoon. And you want to be generous to it because you want that oil to soak into the wood and you're just giving it a good rub down. You want it so that it's nice and shiny all over and then you just leave it for another night. Leave it to, to 
to rub in and then just give it a gentle polish with a soft cloth maybe not a tissue um, soft bit of fabric an old t-shirt or something like that um, or one of those uh, fabric dish cloths you can get although try to avoid the fibrous ones because you get sticky fibers stuck in everything but again so I'm rubbing that oil in making sure it's really rubbed in nicely you get a nice sheen to your spoon it's hard to see because of my light here but that will then protect it for some time there you go a bit better on that one and that's it that's all you need to do happy carving I hope you uh, make a few spoons and enjoy yourselves with it and it hopes it takes you a bit more into the spoon carving world thanks very much for watching please do hit the like and the share button subscribe to the channel as well um, I'm nearly at a thousand subscribers when I get there I will be doing a giveaway of some sorts uh, but uh, so please do recommend to a friend as well and someone who you think might want to get into carving or anything like that as lockdown start finishes and opens up more and more here in England I will be doing more and more outdoor videos uh, as time comes on and especially with the weather getting better throughout the year I'll be trying to get out a little bit more so there'll be much more variety in what, what goes up on my channel thanks very much again keep safe bye